Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So this week I thought we'd do something a bit different, start do a bit of work on the patrol. I've got quite a few jobs I want to get done on this thing. Um, one being custom drawers. I've seen loads of people make heaps of different versions of them. This already came with these done. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to build your own custom drawers as cheap as possible. So I went bunnings yesterday and I got, so th this will be a two part series. So the first part will just be making these sets of drawers. Probably won't finish them off. I haven't got the carpet or anything yet. And I've got a, a few other plans, but essentially we're going to cage this in and we're going to have two drawers here. The bottom one's going to pull out. It's going to be like a U-shape, upside down U-shape drawer. That's going to pull out and have another drawer that comes out inside it. So essentially basically creating like a bit of a, a kitchen area. We'll go through how to set it up, how to install your slides, everything. We'll go through the whole job and following that method of doing it this way, you'll, you'll be able to do these. So this, the, these are pretty basic. There's nothing hard and fast about them. Now these aren't full depth drawers. They stop it's probably, well they go 500 back and then they stop with a bit of a recess at the back of these. These were $17 a sheet. A um, lot cheaper than plywood and a lot better finish. And it's 16 mil as opposed to the nine or the 12 mil in the end in the plywood. Um, drill runners, we'll explain about why I went with them over the Teflon and they've got some catches here. So all of, all of this cost me $170. Hi right guys, so I've shown you, I've gone with 16mm um, MDF. I was going to, I was going to go with plywood, but it was 30 odd dollars a sheet. And plywood, the finish is a bit iffy. Um, I like MDF just because it's, it's not the best for fixing with. Plywood's a lot better to fix with, you know, with screwing through ends. Um, but that stuff has got a really good finish on it um, and it was basically this was all about doing it as cheap as possible. So these are $12 so they're really cheap, the 45 kilo load rating, 500 mil runners and then these were 17 which are the push to open ones. The reason I went with slides over the, everyone going with the Teflon is I don't know if people are sort of a bit skeptical on whether they can install draw slides because even for tradies, they are a pain in the arse, working them out, setting them out, they are a real pain to get perfect, but I'll show you a really easy, quick way of doing these, installing these, um, with custom sized drawers, basically, so there's no measuring and working out all the maths of the run, none of that, we'll just do it in situ, it's really easy, so for cheapness, these, they're a lot cheaper than the Teflon size, if you get the Teflon, you're probably going to end up rebating in so you're going to need um, a little router and you might not have one you've got a router in a little strip knocking the teflon then i'm not obviously you can pull them straight out um yeah for e i don't see what the issue is running drawer slides for 12 dollars if they wear out you pull the drawer out you change them piece of cake drawers are going to go are going to be 500 deep so here's my runners they're going to go from the back of there to there and the reason it's set back is you measure back from there, plumb up, it fits with the door shut. Quickly explain how I worked out what depth of drawers I want on this top section. But when this door shuts, as you can see, if you close the door and you measure from that back bit, if this is gonna be plumb all the way down, obviously if you come to the edge, you know, you get, your door's not gonna shut. So you find out when you, all your doors are shut, give it an inch, however much you want it, give it, plumb down from where, from where that point is, off the door with it shut, and then you measure back from there, transfer that measurement, you've got mark here, measure from where you want to go back with the, the drawer, so I don't want to go all the way back because like I say I want to keep this back section, so I measure from there to the mark which I've plumbed down from here, with the door closed, which gave me 500. So that was perfect. So then obviously I purchased the 500 drawer runs. 
Right guys, so this is your draw slide, really basic. When you're working out your measurements, don't go measuring and working out off the top here. Basically, you've got a bit of a guide. All your screw lines, your screw holes, sorry, are all in one nice line. They're all central, even the ones on the um, drawer section. This is your cabinet section. They're all in one nice line, you can see on the back. So work out your measurements when you're doing it to that center line. And when you're first setting it up, use the screw holes that are elongated. So if there's any adjustments, you can use them, then go to using the single screw holes. To remove it, pull your, slide, pull your draw slide out, flip it over. There's a black little catch there, little tab. Push that in, that slides out. All right guys, so I've cut I've cut the carcass for the drawer. Basically, these are going to be my bottom pieces. I'm not putting a full piece in, just weight saving. This is just going to hold the thing square. And also I can fix this into that section of drawers. So as, if I want to remove it, I can. I was originally just going to do the sides, pull that panel up and fix from underneath. Self a brush, just some PVA. So it's just a bit of a test trial fit, slide him in. Too much it makes things a bit easier but if you haven't got one it's not the end of the world you can just do it this way from scratch that's your clock is all screwed up I'm gonna drop in the center divider now like so all you do for that is measure, just measure this gap, check that that's correct as well, but just measure inside there, and I've just gone centre of the drawers. and you have to pull the nails out. Just find a little pencil line and then a straight edge. Nail hole to nail, bit of a line. with MGF that the pilot hole drill bit is the same size as the screw otherwise it can split or it can burst out the edges right guys so what I'm doing here is I'm just showing you how I'm going to set out and where I'm going to put these draw runs now these ones are the push to open draw runs not the standard ones so essentially you see that top bit at the top, you 
you push the drawer front in and it pops out. And you can see the mechanism there. It comes out the same as the other side. So basically what I've done, I'm gonna pack it up 16 mil. I've just got a bit of these. And sl I slide it right to the back. If you can see. Right to the back of the edge there. Nice and flush. And that gives me this gap here. That's the face of where my, well, my front's gonna sit tight up against that. So it's essentially gonna be this is going to be my drawer front. So you can see, obviously, it's set back. I can push it back in. I don't mind a little bit of a setback. I can set it flush, whichever I choose. So that's the reason I didn't do it 500, as this face would be proud of the carcass. So the reason I've gone 60 mil packers underneath it, you probably can just drop them on the top, but obviously I'm going to have my... panel on the side there and then you see that gap I've got a backing board for go on the base of the um, drawer they come with screws it's perfect to screw in the back of there I'm not going to bother pre-drilling these for what this is this small it's not going through the end it's not going to make much of a difference so like I said before they push to open Pull them out. There's that little tab. That's going to go on my drawer. And this is my runner. You can see that line. same process on this side, pop him out, slide him, unlock the tab, pull him out, the runner's in, I slid that back in there, what we'll do is these are the sides and we'll sort of fix these up first, so what you want to do is lift it up so you know how high, so say I've got that 8mm backing board to go underneath which will be pinned on to the outside of that. So I want enough clearance, plus I'll give it a little bit. So, say there, and then if you just mark, if you just mark a cent that center line in the center of that there, that'll give you, that's where your screw holes are. So then you transfer this line along. So now I've marked that there. What I'll do, push that out. The tape measure, you measure up from there, that's 25 mil. So 25 mil, 25 mil. Straight edge down there. This is the easiest way of doing your, if you, to make your custom drawers. So that was that line we transferred from the center of the runner. There, 25 mil line all the way down. We've got that there. We've got this. Now we know that is the edge. So we line we line that line we've drawn all the way down there. We line it into the center of these screw holes. Now, like I say, because you've got left and right adjustment, up and down adjustment, use these initially. Don't use the center one because that sets it. If you put one in there, you can always move it up and down to adjust it and same back and forth. So then basically, this is our drawer at the sides. We'll slot, slot him in there, push him back. That's the drawer end. And then if you see, the face of the drawers will be fixed to there. And we've got a nice little recess there. And then so we repeat that process over there. We remember the measurement was 25 mil from the bottom of that. So 
We'll have in there. That's a good edge. So we'll repeat that process on that side. Opposite sides, the repair. Same again, we'll slide him in, push him all the way back. That's the push to open feature. Push him back. Now, all you do is you measure. Now they're in, and you're happy with the clearance at the bottom. So then, once you've got that in, you basically just measure. That is 408. 408. So you now know you could go 408 mil. Check the back. Right, so now I've took the measurements from the inside with the runners in. I've cut the back. basically just screw him through there so you can get a bit of glue. Sliding nice and smooth. So there you go, that's the easiest way for doing custom drawers with your slides with no mats. I've cut the draw front. Basically, all I did was I measured that distance, that distance, and knock 10mm off all round, and then get the front, pop them in, and then you basically put a bit of glue behind. Pack him up so they get the gaps nice and equal and even. I'll, I'll pack him up a little bit and then we'll pin him, pin him to that and then I can screw it on. Basically, the um, this is going to be my tabletop. So the plan is this will have a cutout for um, a collapsible sink. Basically what will happen, there will be another drawer inside here, which will be one of these, which will pull out. So then you'll have this workspace. Those hinges and save again. Alright, guys, same again. I've cut the sides. We've got the inner push to close sliders on. Line, centre there. That's it. 
transfer that line all the way down, pull them out, screw them on, same both sides, as the same as these other three. Sweet. And there's your... Between we've got three, four, what's that, three, four, six, three, four, seven. Three, four, seven. So we'll cut the front and back. Three, four, seven. Keep your work area tidy because you'll trip over stuff. Draw in this recess, we can probably put in a, a tabletop there as well, so you can sort of use the two. Right, essentially, with the push to open with the handle, and once you unlatch the handle, you can pull the hot just that out, so you're not pulling this out first. So, you would literally use the latch. You'd use the latch with pull it, that would come out first, and then you would hold, hold that bit, push that in, and then that comes out. on you'll just be able to pull it as one top and then you'll basically push that to get that one right guys so I'll lift the cabinets in drop them in a bit of a test fit see how they go and I'll fix them off and then I'll build a frame around around this I will say though, she um, quite heavy. Shuts. Like that finger gap. Picked up two of these cheapy chest handles just to go on there to pull these ones out because they've got no handles on. So I've got one for each of that and then I've got these latch ones for here. So I'll probably I'll cut them in, one on each one at the top and bottom. They're both keyed alike. And then um, I'll go to Spotlight and I'll get some of their car black upholstery stuff. Once that frames in, I'll take this out, remove these screws, pull that off, and then we'll just carpet line the lot. Like I say, I've got an idea down the back of here. It's still, it's quite tight to get in there. Um, so I'm not sure, but it might be might be useful for some stuff. You still reach in down the back of there. Just line these up. Push 
chain on. So we got that one. Push to open. Push to open that one. That's another drawer. Same as that one. And then you pull that. You got that. Show you again. You can, there's a couple, couple of ways you can do it. Once this has got the handle on, you'll be able to just pull it because the inside ones are pushed to open so it locks. So you can just pull that and you'll be able to just use that as a table. The plan was a collapsible sink or something cut in there. Um, nice to touch eye. Or another way. Oh yeah, sorry, so say you were doing it, pull it out that way. Then you would just push that and pull that out, like so. Then, and do the, um, the top bit, because I do, uh, I was debating whether or not to box that fridge in, but I reckon I'll box the fridge in, because then they've got, uh, that way I'll have storage on top. Right there, so I've just glued and screwing this strip. Fridge out, remove the carpet. And then this is the, so I can fit this in. So, all's are done, same as before. I've cut this out, I've put a notch out, a notch out the side here. So as when the fridge is out, I can access my battery and everything else. And then glued, screwed, nail gunned, and glued and screwed that that up. Now I want this to be removable, so I've also cut a sort of a round bit of a bull nose on the end of there, just so it's not not as ugly as it being square. Um, I want to be able to remove this. So I'll probably put this on brackets um, because I don't, yeah, I'd like, but I can remove this and I can remove that, so I'm happy with that. Right guys, so um, that's it, that's the end of part one. Bulk of the work's done now, we just got to tidy it off, get all the latches, um, and then chuck the carpet on, just get it looking a lot nicer. Um, like I say, I might even show you that little rack thing that I'm going to make down the side. Um, so yeah, I'll do... I'll finish this off next week. We'll do part two, get it all looking tidy. So um, yeah, hope you found it useful. Hope you got some ideas from it and learned learned a few things along the way. So you can have a bash at doing your own. Like I say, not bad. One hundred and seventy dollars to get to this stage. That's what it's cost so far. So I think that's pretty good. Um, don't forget, like, share, subscribe. Um, really helps us out heaps. So cheers, boys and girls.